Middle School 177. That's out in Vincenthurst, where they say blacks wasn't allowed. But I was on a school bus, so I went to 177. And what I learned in, in public school, when I got to junior high school, I sat back. And the teacher's asking, how are you sitting back? You ain't saying that, but you getting, you getting B's and A's. I said, because I learned that when I was over in, in 177. Already, what, you trying, what you teach me now, I already learned over here. So that's saying that the curriculum is messed up. You know, and the parents are soft. Yeah, the parents are soft. And to be honest, I can't remember 20 numbers in my head right now because of the phone. Because of the phone. <laughs> when I was young, I remember all numbers. Every number, any number, every number. You know, but nowadays, and that's what they do. They do that too. They put electronics in, you know what I'm saying? So now you ain't using your brain. Mm -hmm. Everything is rote. Everything is on memory. Mm -hmm. You know, everything is rote. Everything is rote. R-O-T-E. Memory. So we ain't have to do nothing. Everything does it for ourselves. You know, so. And that's about, you know, that's about, that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, one more, and then we wrap up. Sure, I know. Should I pull on and say something briefly? Can I just say something else? Like that? Keeping it with being really quick, is that um, our love really needs to overcome our fears? Yes. Yes. I like what you said about uh, well, you know, none of us are leaders, all of us are leaders. Like I said, uh, I've never been a, well, when I was a kid, I was a follower. I got myself into a lot of trouble following other people. And, uh, but I, look, yesterday, uh, and today, today, particularly this morning, it was a good experience down at the uh, Erie County Industrial yes. Development Agency. There's about 40 occupied people down there. And, uh, so when the gentleman before mentioned the, the splinter group, it's, it's, it's been, you know, they have a lot of conflicts and it's breaking down. But there's still, there's still something at the center there that's, that's holding them together and keeping them focused on the issues. And what I heard, I mean, it's a lesson for me. I'm 67 years old. I know I look younger, but... The things I, some of the things I heard this morning, the things that I didn't know. You know, my area's always been death penalty, business stuff, you know, things like that. But exposing myself, and, and Karim has, has, has encouraged that, working with other coalitions on like the frack and things like that, just getting exposed to more information. Uh, but what I heard this morning was interesting, but, and just briefly, for example, Carl Palladino is going to do something in the, in the Buffalo News about how much he's going to get a million dollars or something to help him finish restoring this building that he started like 10 years ago. And here's a guy who's worth $150 million. And the city is going to give him, because he's basically threatening now. He's basically blackmailing the city by saying, well, you know, give it to me. I'm just going to this project go to shit. <laughs> and, and, and so the uh, Erie County uh, 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 IDA. IDA, Industrial Development Agency, is not really developing industry, but they give them like 60 or $70 million a year to these wealthy people. And they're, and they're talking about laying more people at the... At the, at the uh, NAFTA, you know, with the, with the buses and, and cutting, cutting services and things like that. And anyway, just, there was just, uh, everybody who, who said something this morning was just, everything was coming on. People are becoming more and more informed, you know? In the prison work, I mean, it's like, it's like, it's not sexy, you know what I mean? People have been in this, who have been around for a while, know that it's a hard sell with anybody. Uh, Karima has been a, uh, an inspiration to me because she doesn't, she doesn't give up. She has to go with a bone and ain't, she ain't going nowhere. <laughs> she she wants, you know? Uh, I know, I know, I know that some of us in, in, you know, in political circles who don't think that holding a sign is very effective. And maybe it's not, you know, maybe, maybe it's, maybe going up there and punch the sheriff in the mouth, like, I think he's done a little fast. The sheriff, you're on the mouth. inside the jail a little fast. <laughs> We've been there two and a half years. We've been there two and a half years. We've established a community corrections advisory board. The, oh, the only board member this morning on this on this theater was Betty Jean Grant. Mm -hmm. She was the only board member who showed up. And they had one guy walking around with a microphone. He was just like this. 
good time. You know, and I, I thought he was going to shit in his pants. <laughs> yeah, I mean it. And, and, and I kind of felt sorry for him, too. But uh, the, 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 the Occupy people, we had a thing the other day with, with Martin Luther King talk, and about 15 people from Occupy came down yeah. to join us on the corner. There are 22 people. We haven't had 22 people since <laughs> three people committed suicide in three months, right? Yeah. So it's really important that we work together and, 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 and from the heart, you know? We're all learning. 25 years old or, or 67, you know? We're all learning every day to be to be better people, to try to help other people as much as we can, you know? And look at Sheila, she was the hero, and, you know? Yeah, I can do that, right? One time I, was, I ran out of gas or something, she gave me 20 bucks. So, what are you doing? I'm not a She told me I hope you were. I guess it's funny, too. <laughs> Yeah, she'll she'll buy you some more gas. Don't worry about me. I'm all right. Yeah, the sheriff don't forget to come out Wednesday night. He's supposed oh, yeah. to be coming. We're not all taking our breath on that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're and we're going really to do these to attend that. We know. Because we want to know. Yeah. I don't mean to take over, but I got to ask this. We want to know. Why do our black and white men and Puerto Rican men go to prison when they rape these women? And your police officers in uniform rape these women. They get probation. Where did that shit come from? Come on down, Immediately, immediately after that event, immediately after that event, yes. also mm -hmm. it was going to be one here, which is a working session around gaining your release for each woman's team. And don't forget the correctional officer either, raping the, raping the women's in the prison. Come on. Raping the men too. Yeah. <laughs> so I think we're gonna wrap it up here then. This is a good note to wrap it up on because <coughs> in response to what you asked about where's the resistance today. And I want to start with that. Nostalgia is not what David's book about and it's not what this event is about for the way that resistance looked in the 60s and 70s. Resistance is going to look different in every period. And this little, this little ending that you were all talking about, about all this stuff that's happening in Buffalo, is the answer to that question. It, is, it does look different today. It may not have single visible heroic leaders. Maybe later the leadership will be more collective, um, coming out of a more feminist model. Maybe we'll have, maybe we won't have single visible leaders. Maybe we'll have a movement that looks more like Occupy. The Trayvon, the response to Trayvon Martin has been fabulous. It's a movement without visible spokespeople of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people around the country saying, we're sick of it. No more of our young black men being shot and people getting away with it scot-free. That's a fabulous kind of resistance. It's a totally important kind of resistance. It, we don't need to look back and try to replicate the models of the past. We have a lot of very strong, it, this is a very difficult period, and we also have a tremendous amount of standing up in the face of repression that looks like Occupy, that looks like Trayvon, that looks like the response to the killing of Trayvon Martin, that looks like prisoner justice work. Tremendous upsurge of realization behind um, Michelle Alexander's book, uh, The New Jim Crow, which says that mass incarceration is the lead form of racial injustice in our time. And people have risen up behind that. Wherever we go around prison, around prisoner justice, justice issues, People come out in droves. People are interested and care about it. The communities that are impacted care about it. Look, you have, look around globally and see that, it, particularly in Latin America, there's real strong resistance to U.S. imperialism. The system is going to try to cover up the resistance and make it invisible. In every period, they try to make resistance invisible. You're not going to see it in headlines in the in mainstream newspapers and, and TV shows. They aren't going to advertise the level of resistance that exists. We're going to have to find it. We're going to have to tell each other about it. We'll spread it on the internet. The, the visibility has to come from us. The leadership is a different kind of leadership. Resistance is alive in this. It's a difficult period, but there is important waves of resistance. And um, this fabulous group of people on the panel are a key part of it here in Buffalo, and I've loved hearing about all the different pieces of resistance that are going on in here. So um, we're going to have to wrap up, but um, please give our panelists a hand. Of the
Yeah. 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 Yeah.